అది ఇట్స్ పరమౌంట్ దట్ బ్యాంకింగ్ బేసికలీ ఈజ్ అ కీ ఎకనామిక్ యాక్టివిటీ దట్ ప్రొఫైల్ ద ఎకనామీ అండ్ వీ కంటిన్యూ అవర్ సర్వీసెస్ అన్ ఇంటర్ప్టెడ్ ఇన్ అ సిచ్యువేషన్ లైక్ దిస్ రైట్ నౌ మోర్ దెన్ ఎయిటీ పర్సెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఎన్డిబిస్ ట్రాన్సాక్షన్స్ ఆర్ డన్ త్రూ డిజిటల్ ప్లాట్ఫామ్స్ ఓకే we have 15 rpa robotic process automation arrangements and that has also saved more than 100 staff requirement so the a customer of ndb get the best of all this so that there are a lot of investment option rather than traditional fixed deposits and uh, savings accounts of our bank offers now the customers have the option of funding uh, i mean diverting their investments to different investment horizons using either like, stock broking activities or wealth funds yes uh, the our listing has helped us to tap the market uh, regularly i mean and we have been part of those uh, road shows as well to get the uh, foreign investors coming and uh, tapping uh, ndb so in the historically also we had uh, several foreign investors holding welcome to another edition of stock pulse this is a online discussion organized by the colombo stock exchange where we feature the leadership of the leading listed companies of the csc the recorded footage will be published on the csc social media pages and other csc digital channels today we have with us the director group chief executive officer of the national development bank plc mr devanta seniviratna Welcome Dibanta to our discussion and it's great to have you with us today. Thank you very much Rajiva for giving me the opportunity to join the Stock Pulse interview. Thank you very much. Thank you again for being with us. Uh Dibanta let's start with the burning question of the day to set the tone and the background for our discussion and yeah. it's about revolving around the covid pandemic. Uh I believe that NDB has been one bank that has coped up very well to offer uninterrupted banking services to our clients. Can you share with us some of the measures that the bank has taken to cope up with the the pandemic challenges and how you have uh, overcome these to offer banking services to your clients? Yeah, sure Rajiv. I it's paramount that uh, banking basically is a key economic activity that propel the economy and we continue our services. uninterrupted in a situation like this so actually even i mean now we are in the third wave and we don't know how long this will go on uh, but i think the preparation that we had based on the uh, first and second wave the learnings actually have helped us to do well in the third wave uh, of course there are so many challenges on the other side but despite that protecting staff protecting our customers that has been the key and that's where i think when in ndb took the lead even in the first wave taking the atms out uh, when when there was first left lockdown introduced there after you will start digital channels the uh, the uh, even the uh, tablet banking also to the customers who are unable to come to the branches so like that we started and now we actually gradually shifted towards the digital platforms so therefore i would say we are quite geared to cater uh on the other side uh, we also split our operations uh, especially on the support functions we actually split into three locations rather than uh, only two and we also split the staff into three different units and they come uh, take turns and come so in case some area is impacted then we have the other two to manage so like that we uh, three locations three units even in the branches we split them into two uh, units and then come and uh, provide the services uh, so i mean like that all the precautions a bank should take we have taken taking uh, priority to the staff safety and also our customer safety also especially uh, on the customer service side uh, on the uh, on the staff side actually we have provided transport as well from six different routes for the staff to come into the head office and uh, it's important especially during the lockdown period and also that's a protection for them as well uh, plus also in terms of arranging the hospital beds and all for the staff Uh, proactively we are supporting so that uh, they are coming without any uh, basically fear to serve the client and it's important that uh, uh, any bank take these precautions uh, because we do a very important role in getting the economy to run 
Of course, and it's great to hear that the BCP measures are working well and uh, the ability to and you continue even during the worst of uh, times that we are experiencing right. now. You spoke about um, going digital and probably it's a good time to talk about that. Uh, with this transformational operational practices that have uh, enabled you to operate, uh, we have seen a surge in new technology advancements and tools to continue businesses virtually. For example, even this interview, which we have normally would have done physically, uh, we have moved to online uh, format. Uh, in, in your opinion, how well do you think the consumer, or let's say in the case of your bank, the customer has embraced these uh, online tools? I would say, Rajiva, I think quite well. I think customers have also realized, I mean, they really value, one is the time, the protection, and also the technology that is available. So, I mean, for example, if you take our NDB NEOS app, which is a digital wallet as well as the app, the transactions have basically doubled. Actually, so from the first way, we saw four times the, uh, the transaction volumes going up. I will let me share some example. Now, last year, whole of last year, through the NEOS app, we did about 1.8 million transactions with a value of about 46.5 billion for the whole of last year. Okay. This year, for the first six months, we have done 1.6 million, uh, 1.6 million transactions. Volume is 52 billion. So we have basically exceeded whole of last year in the six in months. In six months. Itself. Yeah. So shows that how the customers have shifted to uh, the mobile lab. Online. And there are many reasons. I mean, one is the mobile savvy customers that we have. Uh, for there are challenges as well when it comes to uh, the accessibility for some of those uh, in the rural areas. But, uh, but still, the new registration, for example, uh, last month alone, new registration, we had about 7,900 new registrations. Do you see even this prevalent among the elderly population? I mean, you have a, you have a mix of young and old in your banking base. Yes. Yeah. Do you feel the adoption is also happening even among the, say, 60 plus kind of customer as well? More towards the younger crowd, but even them, I have seen, because uh, what we have done is when the, uh, after the lockdowns and all, those older, older customers also came into. So we proposed them to download the app. And it's very simple. I mean, going to the app store and getting it downloaded. Yeah. But actually, I got some of our staff at the branches to help them through that journey, right? So that uh, it's easier for them. And once they get used to, uh, they are really happy with that. So I think initially it was a younger crowd, but I think now it's a mix of all uh, uh, all ages uh, using the app, uh, Rajiva. So talking about uh, the digitalization, um, what were the kind of challenges that you faced in engaging the customer base to you know start switching to virtual tools I, i'm sure you'd have used a lot of incentives but any any kind of particular challenge that you faced in, in the conversion yeah so i think key challenge is uh, of course compared to the countries in the region sri lanka is ahead so i think that's okay. a plus factor for us being island nation our digital infrastructure is quite uh, good uh, we have, for example, 144 cellular connection for 100 customers, so 1.4 times. And the data also suggests that about 62% of them are using internet. Uh, so like that, I think the atmosphere is right for driving a digital strategy. One area is the only rural side and also the connectivity issues. Okay. So if we can sort this out, uh, but on the knowledge wise, I think our, our customers of, for that matter, the Sri Lankan population is quite digitally savvy. Yeah, uh, so that, yeah. in that sense, main challenge uh, that we see is the connectivity and uh, especially on the rural areas and some kind of uh, education that may have to provide it, especially for the rural community. But on the urban uh, community, we have seen uh, quite a good uh, application of the, those. Uh, okay. So that way, I think key challenge is the connectivity. So and also the stability of these uh, uh, network systems 
uh, okay. on the on the yeah. 4G and all. So that's the other challenge. I mean, some are quite advanced, but some other uh, some other service providers may have to work on that. So that's the challenge to approach the entire community, entire rural base. Uh, so that's one challenge uh, that we see. Okay. Yes, I think uh, because this happened so fast, maybe even the service providers are probably in the process of scaling up their um, uh, levels of access uh, yes. areas outside Colombo. So probably we need to give them some time. Uh, another interesting question is, uh, I think this is broadly applicable to maybe all branches, as all, all banks as well. As a result of this digital transformation, have you seen a reduction the rate of customers obtaining banking services from going into physical branch locations? And do you think that, say, going forward, it may change in any way the bank's plans for growth and expansion in terms of expanding the physical branch network? Have you thought that far? Yeah, we have thought about it. Uh, but to answer your first question about uh, the, whether there's a reduction in uh, customers coming into the branch. It's too early to assess it, uh, Rajiva, because uh, we had several lockdowns. So with that, yeah. I'm unable to commit. But my gut feeling is, yes, there is a substantial reduction, but I'm unable to substantiate it with some uh, empirical yes. evidence to review. Yes. Uh, but I, I gut feeling is that's a feedback I get from my uh, digital banking staff as well. There is a reduction. But I can share one uh, uh, one information with you. Right now, more than eighty percent of NDB's transactions are done through digital platforms. Okay. So okay. so that's eighty percent is a quite that's, a high. Value. That's a high figure. That's a high figure. So that's uh, I mean that was somewhere around sixty percent, uh, say one and a half to two years ago, which has gone up to eighty percent. Uh, we did some maths as well about, I mean, you now I, I shared with you about 55 billion worth of transactions that we routed through the NDB NEOS for the first six months. Now, had we done those transactions using manual uh, manual uh, process, yeah. my staff sent, I may have to I mean, increase it by minimum 100, 125. Okay. So, so that's the saving on, yeah. on, on the, yeah. uh, by, by moving on to the digital platform. So I did driven by that success, actually, uh, to come into your second question about the branch expansion strategy. Yeah. Actually, we have reviewed it very critically. And uh, you would see that uh, NDB has not opened any branches for the last uh, almost one year, except for relocations. Uh, we have 113 branches. Uh, so we are also evaluating the need for a physical branch. Uh, rather than that, that, that cost saving can be provided through more in one investments yes, in their technology and provide that uh, to the customer. So Same actually action. we have scaled down the uh, branch uh, physical presence. And in say 10 years time, sometimes uh, uh, most of the, all the banks may have to review this uh, okay. physical presence and the infrastructure costs, uh, I mean, that would soon happen sooner than later. Uh, so that's, that's the other positive side of uh, this uh, right. yes. yeah. so good thought leadership i think in that direction i'm sure the banks are also looking and uh, thinking in that same uh, fashion because uh, it seems to be that uh, online ease is the answer for the future yeah rajiv just to share with you i think we we saw this coming about 2 years ago in actually in 2018 when we right. uh, uh, discussed on our strategy strategic plan when we went for a co-banking uh, change as well, I think. Uh, so that's why we took that decision to go for a co-banking upgrade, looking at even investment in a digital layer as well. And taking the digital layer as one of the key pillars in our strategy. And that has actually helped us to come to this level where it's all two to three years of hard work, strategically investing on the correct uh, areas. And that has reaped these benefits. So that's why we were able to cater to when the lockdown happened, cater the clients very early and come up with all these services. Uh, and, and, and in that process, we not only looked at the customer interaction, but also internally, how do, how do we adjust to it? So I'm uh, happy to share, Rajiv, that we are the only bank. We have uh, 15 robots 
working hand in hand with us. We have 15 RPA, robotic process automation arrangements. And that has also saved more than 100 staff requirement for the last uh, two years. And uh, I mean, rather than it's a headcount reduction, I mean, uh, still we have grown our headcount. We have more than 3,200 staff now. But what has happened is that the staff would actually apply quality time on more value addition work done rather than the mundane exactly. uh, tasks. So that's a good shift. I mean, otherwise you get monotonous tasks and uh, you, it's a waste of your brain power as well. So those things we have shifted to the uh, RPAs. And also we introduced more than 20 workflow processes. So the things are very streamlined and the efficiency has improved. So that is why uh, when you analyze our account, you would see that uh, our cost income ratio uh, from a high level of uh, 48, 50, uh, four years ago in 2017, 2016. Now it has come to lower 30s. We were at 33% as of uh, June when we shared the numbers to the market. 33% stock uh, cost income ratio. So I think one of the lowest in the banking sector, thanks to this uh, digitalization, internal digitalization process as well. And that has helped us to get the efficiencies and also all these awards that we have won, uh, especially the best digital bank uh, from global finance and several digital initiatives have been recognized globally. Uh, thanks to all these uh, initiatives that we have uh, and the investments that we have made uh, achieve. So it's great to hear that they the fact that your innovation has resulted in bottom line uh, in, in the bottom line. So I think that's innovation in the real sense. So and congratulations on your many awards, including yourself. I think you won the best uh, group CEO award recently this year, and uh, it's probably endorsement of all the kind of innovative work that you and your bank has been engaging in. And, Thank you, Rajiv. I think these kind of awards naturally motivate us and uh, actually help us to do better. I mean, what we do is to ensure that the customers, the stakeholders get the best ultimately. So yeah. all these kind of uh, awards uh, motivate the team and uh, do well. And thank you for that. Uh, that's, coming that's, yeah, that's, that's great to hear, I think. Um, turning to capital markets, as a group, I think you are also... Uh, a bank that has significant presence in the capital market through several subsidiaries. I mean, namely, yes. you have uh, investment bank, you have stockbroking, you have uh, wealth. Uh, so would you like to talk a little bit about those activities? Yeah, certainly. I think uh, that's where the NDB uh, has a, probably an edge compared to all the other banks. Uh, you're correct. I think we have NDB investment banking who had been uh, award-winning best investment bank for the last, uh, I think, 11 consecutive years, the Romani Award. Uh, and they have been in the forefront, especially in uh, more active capital market uh, activities that are happening. Uh, then the NDB Wealth, again, the largest wealth management fund, the uh, unit trust, and also the related funds, uh, again, the largest uh, wealth fund in the country. And the NDB stockbrokers, uh, I think we are now like the six largest operator may be having about 4% of the market share at the moment. But there again, we saw a good turnaround in NDB stockbrokers in the last one year compared to, because thanks to the more increased capital market activities uh, supported by CSC, SCC and all the market uh, sentiments. And that all helped to improve on the activities of these uh, subsidiaries. And we also, we have uh, NDB Zephyr Fund, which is investing in uh, uh, capital uh, on deserving companies. And during this year, we saw exit of uh, two such investments uh, okay. through the market. Again, thanks to the okay. capital markets, uh, okay. we exited uh, recently one was the Jack Holding. Uh, these are market yeah. uh, notes uh, so that I can disclose and also the Pan Asian Power, both are listed entities. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, active stock market helped us uh, uh, suffer kind of funds to invest more and one main exit route for this is uh, the equity market. So that has helped us. So just to share some of the, I mean, how the CSC and the soft market activities have helped us. So NDB alone uh, raised capital. Recently, we raised uh, our rights issue. We raised nine and a half billion. La two years ago, again, we tapped the market and raised three and a half billion. So all in all, about uh, 15 billion over the last three years, we raised through the uh, CSC activities by coming to the market and raising uh, equity. Apart from that, uh, debentures, we have raised uh, 
5.6 billion and 9.5 billion in 2019 and 2020. So that's about about, about again 12 billion uh, worth of uh, not 12, uh, 16 billion worth of fundraising. Uh, when it comes to NDB uh, investment banking, uh, all of last year they have raised funds through debentures, uh, equity uh, divestors, and all uh, close to about 24 billion last year. This year, uh, IPOs, uh, one of the IPOs they did, so that uh, 2.3 billion was raised uh, through the equity market, then 18 billion in debentures, 3 billion in mergers and uh, activities, and 13 billion in equity raising. So, all in all, about uh, 36 billion so far for the six months through the CSC activities that NDBIB got involved. Uh, wealth has uh, more than three and a half billion invested in equity related funds apart from their fixed income security investment. And as I mentioned, the stockbrokers uh, contributing to about 4% of the market share right now. Uh, we do a lot of research as well. So that is also shared uh, recently. We beefed up the research team. So like that, uh, those activities are helping and more active capital market is certainly going to help NDB group. And other thing that we did, uh, Rajiva, was to get the best synergy out of the group companies. So there's a very good... Uh, regular meetings happening between the bank, especially the corporate banking, the project finance team, where the big deals are worked together with the NDB investment banking side. On the retail side, we have a very good arrangement with NDB Wealth and NDB stockbrokers. So the a customer of NDB get the best of all this so that there are a lot of investment options rather than traditional fixed deposits and uh, savings accounts of what bank offers. Now the customers have the option of funding, uh, I mean, diverting their investments to different investment horizons using either like stock broking activities or wealth funds. And recently we came up with uh, one account uh, where a uh, customer can even borrow against the wealth funds in the NDB wealth. So you can hold your funds in the wealth and in case of emergency, you can borrow from the bank at a very reasonable rate. Uh, so these only uh, a group can offer rather than individual entities can offer. And actually, we are now right now working uh, most likely very will be launching it very soon. Uh, stock broking, uh, basically, basically stock buying the share trading activities through the NDB NEOSAP. Uh, so once it's done, I think they, through the app, through a savings account, you can do those activities. So uh, a lot of things are happening because the group synergies are really uh, going to shape up. Ultimately, the customer is going to be the beneficiary uh, in these uh, activities. It's good to hear that the month of that fact that you know apart from traditional banking, you have going into fee based and the group synergy is really working for you there yeah. in, in harnessing the full potential of the market. It's good to hear that. And also what you did share with us in terms of how NDB has uh, very effectively used the capital market for fundraising. I mean your recent rights issue is a probably endorsement uh, of that. Uh, NDB uh, is being yes the large one of the largest companies listed, and I think it was listed maybe twenty seven or twenty years ago somewhere in nineteen ninety three. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your experience as a listed company over the years, and particularly uh, whether how you see the role of public markets like ours uh, helping companies to accelerate great growth? I mean taking from your experience, uh, whether you can share something where other companies also can really uh, come into the capital market, utilize the capital market to really grow. Indeed, yes, as a listed entry, and we are in the S&P uh, SL20 uh, since its Index. inception in 2012. Yeah. Uh, 2012. So a very active uh, uh, share, uh, if you look at the liquidity as well. And uh, yes, uh, the, our listing, has helped us to tap the market uh, regularly. I mean, we have been part of those uh, road shows as well to get the uh, foreign investors coming and uh, tapping uh, NDB. So in the historically also, we had uh, several foreign investors holding. Since of late with the no fund coming in, like right now, uh, more than 20% of our uh, stocks uh, shares are held by uh, foreign investors. So that is uh, one good positive factor for the country as well. But the listing certainly helped 
us to tap the market whenever we want to. So that's why I was sharing the recent two examples, uh, uh, rights issue, three and a half billion two years ago and now nine and a half billion. All those thanks to the listing that we, we had, uh, not only the, uh, the equity raising, but the debentures and the other listed uh, security that we have raised, certainly the, uh, the, that, that has helped. You know, other important thing is the governance structure that uh, we brought in, being a listed entity, Anyway, as bank, uh, banks, we are regulated by the central bank as well. But in addition to that, the stock exchange related rules, uh, all that has helped to improve on the governance framework. And then so that the risk management, the governance, the, 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 the openness of our financial, the accounting that we share, all that has helped to one is to one way to improve the CSC kind of activities and the disclosure requirement from our side. It has helped to be a very good corporate citizen where we raise funds and also we uh, stick to those rules uh, of, uh, so that uh, the market can actually healthily really work well. Uh, so uh, that has helped actually uh, the, the listing uh, for us to raise funds and also to contribute to the market also as a long listed company. So as banks anyway, I think most of the banks are listed uh, but as an active listed entity, I mean, another thing is that we have been uh, disclosing our financial regularly. Every quarter, we make it a point to have an investor webinar. Uh, now, our investor webinar for this quarter is also scheduled this week, later this week. Again, uh, quite a substantial number of uh, analysts and investors are taking part in that. And uh, we have a very open dialogue. Every quarter, we do that. I mean, all those activities have helped us to also earn the Based corporate invest uh, corporate uh, uh, company uh, in terms of uh, investor relations, uh, the CFA uh, award and all we have been winning that regularly uh, because of our disclosure activities that we have done. That's great. That's great. And in fact, you did mention I think one particular success uh, despite all of the foreign outflows we have seen is your agreement with no fund and the funding that they gave the bank. I think it's public knowledge, so we can talk about it. I think that's um, probably a good win, not only for the bank, but for Sri Lanka as well, to have that confidence in a foreign uh, fund investing in, in, in a local listed entity. I mean, do, do you like to share some uh, details of that? Yeah. yeah, certainly, Rajiv. I think it's actually, it's a very successful story uh, we started uh, discussions with uh, no fund uh, mid of last year, right? And then you had to do uh, due diligence, uh, commercial due diligence, and legal due diligence, all that we went through. Despite the COVID uh, third wave, I mean, they have been with us. And even, uh, and then during that process, the country rating also downgraded to triple C. But despite that, I think no fund also had the belief uh, they, they, they counted on our strength, what NDB has done over the last three, four years, and our future potential. So they saw that as a good investment, a long-term investment in the country. And for that matter, this is the first uh, equity investment that uh, no fund has done, a Nordic country has done in Sri Lanka. Uh, so that's why uh, we got a lot of support from the Norwegian embassy as well. And it was it came at a right, right time that when the country is also uh, facing quite a lot of challenges and probably gave a good signal also to the market uh, that still there are good uh, foreign investors who are looking at Sri Lanka positively and this is a good win for NDB and as you correctly said for the country as well. Uh, and no funds contribution won't stop only at the equity level. They are quite keen to look at some other funding as well, which we would deploy through our uh, SME funding side and also the project finance side, especially on the uh, renewable energy side, uh, we have, uh, I mean, the, again, the country is going for more than 70% of our uh, uh, electricity generated through the renewable uh, sources. So in that, uh, reaching that uh, dream, uh, we, have, we are one of those big financiers. So just to share, Rajiv, last five years, we have funded, NDB has funded more than 33% of country's renewable energy requirements. Okay. Right, so that's one third of that's that uh, NDBS yeah. funded. So that's a core area that, and this will continue to support and propel the countries uh, this particular area as well. So a fund like in, uh, no fund coming in, 
uh, we also learn in the process. I mean, there are a lot of uh, due diligence requirement, uh, mm. the environmental Absolutely. protection uh, rules and all. But for a bank, we learn a lot. But that process was quite a good. And soon after that, we got a lot of inquiries from so many other BFIs to fund us as well. And recently, we concluded we and again we announced uh, uh, seventy-five million dollar funding, very concessionary funding from DFC, that is a Development Finance Corporation of USA. Again, uh, coming that that's on a debt side, seven-year funds. Uh, so like that. So I mean, when when a foreign investor comes, naturally the market also. Look at especially yes, the other foreign yeah. investors and look at it positively, and that's where you get the inflows coming. So, yeah. and hopefully with the COVID situation improving later on, I'm sure that's upside gain is quite high for the country yeah. as well as for the NDB. Yeah. I'm sure the Bantha. I think it's a clear endorsement and on the level of confidence that they had in the bank, as market and Sri Lanka as a whole. So it's a it's a win. It's a win for the so. Uh, one last uh, final question, Dibanta, on on shareholders. Uh, would you like to share with us as to what efforts and initiatives you are taking to drive shareholder value, and any any message that you have for shareholders? Yeah. So uh, certainly, I think NDB has been uh, sharing our success by declaring about uh, roughly thirty percent of our dividend. Thirty uh, percent of our profits as dividend for the last five years. So we have continued that trend. Uh, that trend, and I'm sure uh, the board would also support that even in uh, coming year as well to have that uh, as a uh, key dividend bearing stock. Of course, last few years we had to tap the market because of the Basel two capital requirements. The bank was also growing at a very high rate compared to the market. So actually, what happened, uh, Rajiv, was that uh, since 2017, we had a very accelerated growth. So our cumulative average growth rate in assets was about 18% in the four years. And we had the highest growth in the banking sector. Even if you look at the deposit, we had 21% CAGR over the last four years. So again, the highest. So when you grow faster, you need to have capital. So that is why we had to come to the market to tap uh, capital uh, through debentures as well as the equity price. Uh, so one thing that the investors can expect is the, the bank is on a very high growth trajectory. We are now the fourth largest listed bank in the country. Four years ago, we were in strikes uh, sixth. Now we have come to the fourth uh, largest uh, listed bank. And uh, a solid dividend paying stock. Plus the value of the stock. Unfortunately, uh, none of the banks or for that matter, most of the corporates in the listed entities are not showing the real value of our price to book value is less than 50% and which is in line with most of the stocks, unfortunately, because of the current situation. But the book value is around 180 uh, right now, though the share may be trading around 80 rupees. But the upward potential is high. And we uh, so all these investments have been made in more productive assets, even the co-banking upgrade, the digital platforms that we have invested uh, and, and all that. The, the card platform, I think we are, we are into acquiring the, the card side also growing. So once the economy picks up from this uh, COVID situation, I, I mean, we are expecting that to happen very soon. We will go through this. I'm sure we all have to embrace and then I mean, face I'm this challenge. Ready. But the upside gain for the country, uh, the industry is quite high. So that's where NDB, in the past, we have been carefully investing all this knowing that upside gain is high. So uh, shareholders, what, what can they can expect is quite a good growth in the asset price as well as the dividend flow. So I think it's a good share to invest. We are careful, very good governance structure. We have very professional board that we have all driven by uh, professionalism is quite there. Uh, we have a good team, the young team who are very dedicated. So all that in a right stock. So I think the, the upside gain is high, uh, Ajiba. Good to hear that, Dimant. I think all the ingredients are in place and we wish you well in your journey and uh, you. to further prosper and grow as you as you go along. So thank you, thank you Dimant, again for joining us on this discussion. We have had, I think, an extremely interesting uh, and insightful discussion today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rajiva, for and the Stock Exchange for giving us the opportunity. Uh, I enjoyed sharing some thoughts. 
Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you.